Hey, I'm Robert Cook Saw Manufacturing. I uh, want to show you our HD 3238 sawmill. We have been building this mill for over 12 years. Uh, no, we've been in business for 50 years, but this particular model we've been building for over 12 years. I just want to show you a couple features on it. So we have 19 inch wheels. Um, these are steel band wheels. Um, we like the steel band wheels. Some of the other options are belted wheels, urethane wheels, um, even uh, trailer tires. Um, the advantage of these steel wheels is we are able to get them true. So when that wheel's spinning around, we're able to precision grind it um, so there is no in and out play on it. Um, that makes that blade run around a lot smoother, gives you better blade life, um, gives you better quality cuts. We don't have the vibration in it. Um, so that is why we spend a lot of time and effort getting these steel band wheels to be completely true. Now, this blade is the, the heart of our sawmill. Everything we do, we do around this blade. Uh, so we talked about our band wheels. Now we also have our roller guides. Uh, we use roller guides, some of the other systems, uh, sandwich guide, block guides, backup bearings. Um, roller guides are ground, uh, precision ground, so they are completely true, so they're not bouncing on your blade. And we do put some down pressure on it, um, roughly quarter inch down pressure, and that gives me full control over that blade. Um, if I put the blade in between a block, I have a little bit of movement in it. If I'm pushing down on that blade and keeping that guy true, I can completely control that blade and how it's going to cut. Um, gives me faster cuts, better quality cuts. Now I do have a lot of adjustment on these roller guides. Uh, Eight-way adjustment. So we've got our square head bolts here. That allows me to tilt it up, tilt it down, uh, left and right. We've got our vertical adjustment on the block um, so I can pick it up and down keep that blade square with the mill. Um, we don't want to cut tapered, uh, tapered boards. And then I can move it in and out um, if I were to change blade size to line that guide up right to just, just off the back of that blade there. Uh, these guides are greasable. Um, I do need to grease them. That would be the only daily grease fitting on this sawmill. Um, but the fact of them being greasable means I do get better life out of them, not constantly replacing bearings. So on our blade, we want to keep it clean, uh, especially when we're cutting very sappy, pitchy wood. Um, we've got our super drip system on here. Uh, this one is on the outfeed side. I also have one on the infeed side as well. Um, there's a ball valve to turn it on and off, and then a sight glass drip, dripper, and I can adjust the flow. Um, so there's about a drop or so a second running through this sight glass dripper. And that strips down onto a felt pad, and that felt pad wipes it onto the blade. So we, we don't like the idea of pouring or spraying fluid on the blade, making a mess, saturating your wood. Um, but if I come in with that diesel fuel or any oil base uh, fluid, I can wipe it on the blade, be very conservative with it, making more contact, and it also helps uh, to clean it as well. Um, our reservoir for that is part of the frame. So this three by six uh, cross member here, it is uh, welded tight and that serves as our reservoir, about two and a half gallons um, capacity. And that will run for at least a full day of sawing. A lot of it depends on what kind of wood I'm cutting. Um, hardwoods, I may get two days out of it. Softwoods be closer to, to one day. Um, but I'll adjust that as needed. But a light oil coating going onto the blade, coming into the wood, it keeps that pitch from sticking to the blade. So on our drive side, we use our, we call it our drive bearing assembly. Um, this has the same bearings that you'll find in the axle of your truck. Um, so very well built, very solid. Um, we can take this guard off here, get a little bit better look at it. Um, so a lot of people are using pillow block bearings um, for our drive side. There is a lot of pressure on our band blade, and we do have some pressure on our belt as well. So very overbuilt, um, using the tapered bearings, able to withstand a lot of that side load pressure. Um, we are using a double belt for our drive as well. Um, but this unit here is adjustable, so I can tilt my band wheel left and right, um, and I can take it and I can tilt it up and down. Um, now that it will be all preset, but I have that adjustment built in. Um, so if you were to change blade sizes, blade thickness, um, blade width, I am able to open this hinge here um, and adjust that band wheel to match different blade sizes. 
a movable guide arm. You'll have a stationary guide on the fixed side of the mill and a movable guide um, on the variable side of the mill. Uh, we are using a hydraulic motor uh, pulling a chain so I can move that guide in and out depending on the size of my log and I don't have to worry about coming in and fixing any of my alignment. It will stay true all the way in, all the way out. Um, so hydraulic motor here, very strong, very reliable. Um, and that allows us to open our throat or close it depending on the size of our log. To raise this head up and down, um, we are using a hydraulic motor. We really like the hydraulic motors. They're very reliable, um, have a lot of power behind them. Uh, not as big a fan of the electric motors. Uh, we just get longer life, more power out of the hydraulics. Um, I do have a two-stage speed on here. Um, so when we're raising this head up, it's going through the hydraulic motor through our gearbox and then we are using chain, very heavy 60 chain um, that is lifting this head on both sides and then an inch and a half guide rod to keep it stable. Um, so I've got a fast and slow speed that we're using from the hydraulic motor so I can bring it to my height and then dial it in and be very, very accurate um, on my cut. This is our blade tension system. Um, this is part of the care that we take on our blades. Uh, we do have the, the steel wheels, uh, the precision ground wheels. That blade's going through the cut, it will spread out a little bit. Uh, it's not much, but there's a little bit of stretch um, and the steel wheels do not have the, the give on them. Um, so we are using a spring uh, for our blade tension. So when that blade goes through, it is a live active tension. Um, if you've seen some other mills with a pressure gauge on it, when that blade hits the wood, you can see that pressure gauge spike a little bit. Uh, that spring takes a lot of that spike out, um, acclimating with the blade um, when it hits a hard spot in the log or running into the, to the front of the log. Um, very simple to operate. You've got a handle. It is on Acme threaded rod. To release tension, I crank it down. And that gives me plenty of slack on the blade where I can easily get that off of the wheels, put a new one back on. Um, and we have a little key lined up here. And that is the tension that I want to see on our blades. So we'll crank that up until that is just flush across. Um, and that's going to give us about 14,000 tensile pounds on the blade. That is the tension that I want to saw at. No guesswork, I know where it's gonna be at every time. Um, quick, simple, easy to use, very strong system. Um, I do have tracking uh, adjustment built into here as well. These two half inch plates, um, they're able to open and close. Um, it's our, our book and it allows my band wheel to tilt in and out for just the uh, tracking for the blade on the band wheels. Um, it's a very simple system. We like it because it has the spring in place that's going to give me longer blade life uh, versus what you'll see a lot of times for a, um, call it a, a dead tension, um, whether it is a hydraulic cylinder, um, an airbag. Um, we want to have a little bit of give with that steel wheel and our spring setup. I don't believe you'll find a superior system available out there. Loading logs onto the mill. Um, our log lift has four half inch plates uh, and then two three by 12 cylinders. Uh, we can pick up 8,000 pounds. Um, probably won't fit an 8,000 pound log onto the mill. You will not be limited by your log lift pulling logs onto the sawmill. Um, when the log lift comes up, it's gonna dump the log into our dog clamps. Um, this clamp moves up and down, in and out. Um, all the way down there is a spike here and we've got a spike on our rail uh, each bunk so if once that log is squared up we can bring those clamps all the way down bite into it and I do not have to worry about that blade cutting into my into my clamp on my last cut um, so very very simple easy to operate but the log comes up into our clamps and then we've got our turner Turner has a 120 roller chain on it. Um, very, very beefy. We do not have problems with the chain on the Turner. Uh, it's got a lot of power on it. 
It is bi-directional, so I can pivot that arm up and down and I can rotate my chain bi-directionally. Um, it's going to rotate one way, but if I overdo it and I need to square that log up against our squaring arms, um, I do have the ability to, to do that. Um, two squaring arms are standard on the sawmill. They work off of a hydraulic cylinder. Um, we like how they pivot. Um, I can really brace it, keep it strong versus a vertical arm. Um, so that's why we, we go with the, the pivoting arm. Um, and then you have a taper front and rear. I can use that to pick up a stack of lumber to get my forks underneath it. Um, or of course, pick up the small end of the log and keep that heart center. Now we do this a little bit different um, from a lot of the mills that you've seen. When we load the log up, um, it dumps into the clamps. The reason we do that is that these clamps, over hundreds or thousands of logs, if they get a little bent or worn, it will still do their job just fine. If I'm dumping that log into my squaring arm and that squaring arm gets knocked out of shape, I can't cut square lumber. Um, once the log gets onto the mill, it does square up here on the operator side of the mill. That is also where our fixed guide is coming into the log. Our fixed guide does not move. Um, our movable guide, while the, the tolerance is very small, there is some movement there. So we want to enter that log from the best side that, um, that our mill has, um, which is our fixed side. After I take a couple cuts off the top of the log and then I rotate it, I'm now cutting into clean wood. Um, so I'm not chasing uh, bark around this sawmill. Um, I do offer a debarker for this mill, but after I take my first few cuts and rotate it, I would no longer use it. Um, so that's some of the reason that uh, we're set up the way we are. Uh, it does give us a little bit better performance. So the four half inch plate arms on the log lift dumps over to our uh, dog clamps, uh, move up and down, in and out, heavy belt log turner to rotate the logs, squaring arms to square us up, and then our tow boards there um, to adjust the level of the log. So our saw carriage is controlled with our remote box. Uh, that is on a 15 foot lead, so I've got room to, to move around, work with. Uh, there's a mount here at the end of the mill. Um, also have a mount on our log handling hydraulic controls. Um, so it'll sit in place there as well. Uh, but this is our up and down. Up and down are on push switches. And then I have the fast and slow speed. So we have the hydraulic motor on the gearbox for our up and down, raising on 60 chain. Um, we have our scales to line it up with. There's a one inch, four quarter, five quarter, and six quarter. Um, and they are magnetic, so I can peel these scales off, put different ones in place. Um, we offer a couple other options as far as uh, different thicknesses on those scales. Um, but the up and down get, lines me up, and then the fast and slow allows me to really adjust that speed so I know I'm very accurate, gonna cut good quality wood. Um, our guide in and out, so our movable guide arm on the hydraulic motor, outs out, ends in towards the log. Very simple. Um, I do like to, to set it up where it's going to clear the log. If it's going to hit, get it out of the way. I'm not a big fan of trying to chase that guide in and out, which contours of the log as it's going through the cut. Um, your forward and reverse. Forward is on a toggle switch. So I flip that switch, the head takes off down through the cut. I can set my box down and go stack my wood while it's going forward. Um, forward comes off, reverse is a push switch. Um, I've got the drag back system, so I'm normally pulling the board back to me. So I want my hand on the reverse the whole time I'm pulling it. And then as soon as I come off, that head stops. Um, so when I'm pulling the boards back, they're, um, they're heavy. I want to make sure that I can stop it when I need to stop it. Um, so we have our up and down with our fast and slow. We have our forward and reverse our guide in and out. Um, these three are for our optional computer set works. Uh, the one capped is for the optional debarker. Uh, that leaves us with a power switch that controls power to the box and then a kill switch to shut the engine down if I find myself in a bind. On our Ford with the toggle switch, I do have a flow control valve here that adjusts our speed. Uh, this only adjusts the speed going forward, not in reverse. Um, so when I flip my switch, if that is all the way back, the head will not move 
and I have full control adjusting that forward until I find a speed that I'm comfortable with. Um, if I've got a 30 inch wide oak log, I want to make sure that I'm not running my blade into it. Um, smaller, softer the wood, I can hit it a lot faster, obviously. Um, so I command the forward here with our toggle switch and I adjust the speed control uh, or the speed of the Ford with our hydraulic flow control valve. Hey, we're back at the mill today. Um, we ran out of time yesterday, uh, but I do want to continue with our saw frame. So on our saw frame, we have three by six heavy wall tubing, uh, three sixteenths thick. That is one piece from end to end. It is not bolted together. It is not welded together. Um, it is a solid piece of steel. Uh, very, very strong, able to support your big logs. Now we do have the tandem axle, brakes on both axles. Um, the head's gonna lock in place so it tows very well, well balanced. Um, and then we have eight 7,000 pound jack legs uh, to support our frame whenever we're sawing. The HD 3238 comes standard with our drag back system. Uh, so we got five half inch uh, fingers here and every board, every slab, even my big cans, um, I will pull that back to the operator and they're gonna fall and drop on our plate. Um, as an option, we have this roller, a uh, six inch heavy roller. So my board comes off, if it's a two by 12, that's a heavy piece of wood. So it comes off, gives me a little bit of leverage pulling it back. And of course our tongue here is removable. Um, so that will be out of your way when you're set up ready to saw.
So that sums up our HD 3238. Uh, we appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, if you would uh, hit the like, subscribe button. Um, and if you got any more questions on this sawmill, give me a call. Um, you can reach us at 334-692-5074. You'll be able to find that below in the description as well. Uh, we'll also put a link to the sawmill, so we'll have more information on our website. If, uh, if you want to click on that, take you to our website, answer any questions that you have on it. Um, and again, we sure appreciate you uh, watching our videos.